And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to hour number three of the special edition of the Hagman and Hagman Report with special guests Dr. Paul Hegstrom and Steve Quayle. Uh, this has been a terrific show, uh, very helpful from what I can gather, and people in the interactive chat are, uh, want to say thank you to Dr. Hegstrom that you're touching upon a lot of things that people have dealt with in the past and are currently dealing with. Uh, before we get back into what we talked about before the break, I have a question from the chat room. Uh, about the MBTI test, the Myers-Briggs personality test used by companies to determine good employees. Um, and the question goes on to say, um, I am an INFP. How does this re- relate to his work, uh, these tests, um, as far as getting people hired, uh, these Myers-Briggs personality tests? I've used Myers Briggs in the past, and it's not a bad test. So I, I can't say anything negative about it. It's about all that's out there that's, that's somewhat accurate, but it still doesn't show the depth of arrest in development, and that's why I've been I've been working for years on this other test because it doesn't show the stage of development of arrest. It doesn't show the age bracket of which the brain has frozen or, or been fixated, and it doesn't show you the the uh, behaviors, uh, the negative behaviors of that employee when when they come to the end of their ability to hold a pseudo-stable. And so it's uh, these, these things can be played with. Let me give you an example of that. Uh, O.J., when he was on trial uh, and, and had... He, he went to his daughter's dance recital, and if you remember that, I tried to get with I tried to get with the prosecution because uh, I've been known uh, in, in, as an expert witness on a national and international basis in the past, and I don't do that much anymore. But it, they said that when O.J. was in the recital auditorium, he was morose and angry and short with people and uh, a scowl on his face. But the moment he stepped outside, his personality changed, and that's the Jekyll Hyde personality. And very few tests will accurately predict the Jekyll Hyde personality. And in the early years of working with domestic violence, we thought the, and people, you know, therapists thought that the, that the Jekyll Hyde personality may be related in some way to uh, what's called now DID, used to be called multiple personality disorder. But it isn't at all. The thing we have to realize is when a man is arrested in development, been wounded in childhood, and he is abusive emotionally or physically or manipulative or financially abusive, any of those things, his pseudo-personality, the general height, the pseudo-personality, which is what he wants everyone to see, is manageable. If a, if it's a DID or multiple personality disorder, dissociative identity disorder, the person who has it is not in control of who rotates. They rotate on their own, and the host has no idea who's rotating at any given time other than the patterns that are established by those personalities, how they rotate. But with a with a man with a pseudo personality or a Jeff Hyde personality, he's in total control. So when OJ was in the the auditorium, the the people saw him as one thing, but when the cameras when he came out of the auditorium and the cameras and the news were there, he was able to control that personality the way he wanted to, to look outgoing and gregarious and somewhat uh, functional. And so with that type of personality and the, the ability to control it, you'll find that any of the testing instruments for uh, uh, testing for HR, uh, human resources, can be manipulated. Uh, the only one that basically can't is the MMPI, uh, and the MMPI-2 is, is the current uh, 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 one of the MMPIs. They have upgraded that. And so that one will show uh, the, the, the disorders that the person has. And even with therapy, it doesn't change that much. Uh, 
so it gives you a more accurate reading. But they don't use the MMPI for hiring as much as they do for diagnostics. Very, very good. Oh, wow, it, it, so many things to learn. And and uh, I'll tell you, I've, that was a uh, thanks for that question, Joe, because I, I was not aware of that test. Uh, Doctor Hey, Doug. Uh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, Steve. Doug. Let me read. Let me read an email that uh, someone who heard us on the last show, uh, Dr. Hagstrom, I won't use her name, but she said, Hi, Steve, I'm the sister who told you I was in such deep pain, and you told me Jesus would never let me down. My husband and I just got back from life skills. I was able to connect my wounds, and my husband was able to connect his wounds. We are now communicating on a path to healing. And she wanted me to tell you this on the air. Please tell Dr. Hagstrom thank you so very, very much for his life's work. Dr. Deborah Buss held my husband accountable, and he heard and has responded so positively. God bless them all, and thank the Lord for getting us there before the elections. Jesus did not let us down and got us there and back again safely. She said, thank you for the show, and please again tell Dr. Hagstrom, thank you. Now, this is a couple that heard us, and and I think that may have been the one you were referring to, Dr. Hagstrom, but the point that's interesting is is that I'm telling everyone who's with on my voice, I don't care where you live in the world, people fly in. For those of you that absolutely Absolutely, have felt like your life has ended, and I can tell you this, I know what that feels like, I've lived there. The bottom line is, is that there is such a freedom and a hope. Anybody can tell you how screwed up you are, I mean there are textbooks on how to find people who are messed up and have issues. What God gave to Dr. Hagstrom is not only the understanding of what goes wrong, but how to fix it. And that's different than anything and everything else in the planet. So for those of you, I can tell you this. No book will have more effect in anyone. I don't care if you're suffering from PTSD, trauma, divorce, uh, sexual molestation, whatever it is. The things that have filtered your life and your view, there is nothing that I know of that can make such an immediate change as that one book. And, Paul, I want to thank you so much for writing that because it's an amazing, amazing undertaking. And like most people who I know who have read it, including me, say, I'm not reading that book. That book is reading me. No, which book yeah. is that, uh, Steve? Which book is that that you're referring to? Well, it's it, it's it's and and Paul, the the interesting thing is is that when we're talking about you know the the writings that that you have written, we're talking about things that absolutely are life changing, and and that's I think that's really important. So, Doug, what I'm talking about is obviously you know uh, uh, the 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 different. Uh, books and and go on a life skills international yeah. website but i'm just talking to you that you know i, I well i didn't buy them uh, dr hagstrom uh sent them to me after we were first on our uh interview together and the thing that that i think every single person has to get is broken children growing up pain you know okay. and, and okay listen when you're hurt in childhood Physically, mentally, sexually, the pain can affect you your whole life and can even shape the person you become. I'm reading right off his website. And, and it says, but that doesn't mean you have to let the wounds of your childhood destroy your present and future. And if I could say the one word that comes through in every single email that I get is the pain, the discouragement, the hopelessness, and the despair. And, and I told Dr. Hanks from this, I said, uh, I, I, I said, Paul, and forgive me, but, you know, I said, I have never seen so many Christians considering suicide in my entire life. And by the grace of God, Doug, you've let me pray on your show, and I've prayed on other shows, and the Lord has literally stopped people from pulling the trigger on their lives. And, and Dr. Hagstrom has talked about that, too. Exactly, and, and Dr. Hagstrom, just for your uh, information, because we have not talked really since that last program, uh, right. just just to let you know that that I think was uh, our our most popular, if not our most popular, the second most popular downloaded show, and I've gotten so many emails from people saying that you've helped them in in this time. People right now, uh, Dr. Hagstrom, are so mentally. Uh, stressed, it seems like, uh, you yeah. know, every time we look at the news. It's just an ambush from all angles, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, TV, uh, school, yeah. 
the attacks on Christianity, the uncertainty of the future through the propaganda, um, you know, disseminating the information, important information from non-important information, and uh, people's fear level and, and the intensity are very high right now. Exactly. And, and you know what, Doctor, if you can answer a question for me, because this is – I get this all the time. We're living in, in very precarious times, and, and it seems like uh, a husband and a wife – in uh, many, many occasions where the wife will say, look, you know, my husband's not getting it, uh, how serious the times are and how much we need to pay attention. He's stuck on football. He's stuck on sports. You know, uh, and I suppose we can go back to your three, uh, no, you know, three big uh, notes here or notations or rules uh, or three points to remember. Um, but beyond that, how can how can we help the people who are stressed out over current events? What best you know? How can we get people in sync with each other, or how can people get in sync with each other? Well, the first thing is, if I'm arrested in development, I'm not handling life anyway. I it, it's an effort to get up in the morning and go to work, and I wonder, am I am I am I going to be successful enough to maintain my home? because I feel like I could collapse at any given time because I'm developmentally uh, unaware of what it takes to grow up and become stable. So we have husbands that are, are escaping through addictions and, and, again, pornography and sports and workaholism and all kind of things, and, and they want to run. The first thing they want to do is just run because it's easier to run than it is to face in and, and – uh, uh, you know, being a, be a grown-up. But what's interesting is I, I can remember when I was pastoring a church, uh, and it was a mainline denomination, and I got in my car. I was in rock and roll radio and uh, been in radio for years. And I sat in my car in front of that parsonage and thought, I am so childish that it's a good thing I'm a minister because I get a free house and free utilities I could not sign the papers and make payments for 30 years on a house. I'm not that stable. And and I drove off and went to work. And and I wasn't stable. I was I was I was, on a good day. I was maybe 12. And and I had a pseudo personality that would make you think that I was very very uh uh intelligent and and suave and debonair and all those things, but inside I was just a uh, a mushy little kid that couldn't make it, and we're going to have to grow up. And and one of the things when I I spent a week with Steve is we looked at some of these things that that came in on the on the emails of things that are going on in our government and those kind of things. And and I realized it is fun to be a grown up because I wasn't afraid. I can handle what comes down the pike. I have a relationship with my Lord. I know that God is sovereign, and I know that whatever comes, he's going to give me the strength to handle it, and I will handle it, and I don't live in fear. I think this is probably some of the most exciting times in the history of the world, and we get to be a part of it. That's my adult look at what's going on in our world today, because I know that I'm safe no matter what. If I have to give my life, I give my life. It's a shortcut to heaven. Heaven's no threat. But it's fun to grow up and be able to handle these things instead of live in such great fear that I have diarrhea all day and I'm afraid to get in my car and go somewhere and those kind of things. Life goes on and God's in control. That's that's my belief system and I'm going to stick with that until the end. And I'm not ashamed of, of my belief system. But the, the neat thing is we can grow up. It's just like the couple that were... With life skills last week, they got to grow up, and, and we accelerate that course. They didn't need 17 years of counseling and laying on a couch. They needed information to help them realize that they're not defective, they're not screwed up, they are normal, they have the intelligence, they've got everything they need to mature and put a relationship together and to grow up, and, and sometimes it's fun to grow up. My wife and I grew up together in the last 25 years because we were both extremely immature and had been wounded very deeply in childhood. She had wounds at one to one and a half years of age that were devastating. And so the maturing process is exciting because 
we can walk into the world and we can handle it. We can cope. We we can put our trust in God and, and we know that 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 He's a sovereign God and and He has nothing but good for us. So that's what Life Skills does and that's what I that's what I pleaded for because I spent between twenty and thirty thousand on therapy and nobody could even get close to what I was struggling with. And I screamed to God and says, God, you got to do something or I'm going to blow my brains out because I'm not going to live the next 40 years like I've lived the first 40. And this is what he gave me. Isn't that wonderful? That's fantastic. And I've got to say that I think we're going to cut that audio out and play it every uh, every day because people need to hear exactly what you said. Steve, I mean, I, I, that's it, isn't it? I mean, we got to grow up, handle things, and, and uh, wow, it, it's just that simple, I guess. Well, uh, I think, you know, I, I, I like the word arrested development because when when you have arrested development through the trauma of childhood and the filters are there, not only is it arresting your development, but it's imprisoning your ability to become everything that God wants you to become. And I think absolutely. that the neat thing is is that, uh, uh, you know, we used to sing the song, uh, Dr. Hayes, from Jesus breaks every chain and breaks every fetter, meaning everything yep. that ties us. Obviously, the contemporary Christians don't know the Bible very well, so they don't even use, most Christians don't use, Christian music doesn't use the Word of God. But I think the the, the point being is, is that not only when you're arrested in development and you become aware of the fact that you also not only are imprisoned yourself, but you hold others captive to your arrested development. That's the thing that I guess is, is amazing to me when we're arrested in our development, the effect we have on those around us. Well, and our, yeah. our kids. And see, the beauty is my kids came home and I got to help my kids grow up. What a what a privilege that's been. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Steve, uh, how do you want to take this now uh, from here? Uh, because well, I, know- I think I think I think we just let Dr. Hagstrom go until you know until uh, again. Here's the thing: we're told to apply ourselves. Okay, and we're told to uh, the word application means you place something all over or upon something. And so it, there there are people that want a magic pill. I, I always used to pray this God. And I used to use a word I won't use on the air. And, and Dr. Hagstrom helped me to understand, I, it's not that I was defective. I was arrested in my development. I won't even tell my early story because I've, I've, I've alluded to parts of it. But the thing is, is that God has given a plan. See, the word cooperate, and that's the other thing Dr. Hagstrom has really helped me to understand, is that, that you basically cooperate with God. He's given you the things to do, and it's again, it's wonderful through his word. Uh, Dr. Hagstrom, will you explain to people why it's important that they, they literally speak forth over themselves the thoughts they want to incorporate and to re uh, reprogram the synapses and the neurons and everything, because basically Jesus said, "Whoever will say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast in the sea, not doubting, it'll be done." So it's true in our life too. It's true that how important that is, because I think the power of the spoken word is critical. Would you take time because we've laid out what's going on and, and stuff, and obviously people. I'm telling everyone. There's not one person who has an excuse for not ordering that book because I'm, it's not like a book. I, look, I'm an author. I write stuff, and, and my, I'm, I'm the background guy. This is something that God has given to Dr. Hagstrom that you will be blessed beyond your uh, 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 wildest dreams. And from there, it's like launching. It's like you get fueled uh, to be able to deal with the future, as Doug asked the question. I can tell you this. You cannot deal with the future if you're arrested in your development. I came to that consideration. The Lord revealed to me that. And he said, in order to help others get whole, you got to get whole. And I didn't realize, W-H-O-L-E, and I didn't realize the H-O-L-E-S, the holes, that had happened to me as a kid. I lived on the streets as an early kid. 
I got into full blown having to grow up and be a teenage al- a teenage alcoholic at 13, and from that time I chased skirts until God arrested uh, me. Literally, uh, you know, gave me a- another alternative to a lifestyle. So I thank the Lord. I am in- totally indebted to the Lord. And and but the point is, is that we've got so many people, Doug, that need to hear how they begin to take hold of their life. And that's why the art of positive confession. Look, if, if you look at the mirror and you stick your tongue out or flip yourself off or basically, you know, smash the mirror with a hammer, it's this. It's the devil tearing up the image and likeness of God. Primarily the image, the likeness gets established through Jesus and our relationship with him. But there are so many. I have counseled. Uh, and it doesn't matter how beautiful. I've counseled some amazingly beautiful, beautiful women in the presence of other women. I will never counsel a woman without someone else being there. And they tell me they're ugly. And my wife has helped people who are anorexic, beautiful girls who are absolutely destroying their lives because they, they cannot deal with the trauma of childhood. So I'm going to shut up now, and I'll, I'll pray in the last 10 minutes or whatever for people, but the bottom line is, Dr. Hagen, will you talk about how important it is to speak differently and to basically, as you speak, you reprogram your brain? Yeah, and here's the fun thing. I want to regress back to the area of rejection, incest, molestation, emotional, and physical abuse. When that happens to a child, the child loses, number one, all loss of self-respect. What's wrong with me that this happened to me? Why did this person sin against me? What did I do to cause them to sin against me? So when we lose all self-respect, we then lose our sense of security within the family unit. And it's like dominoes. It just goes this way. And so when we lose our our self-respect because of the woundedness, we lose our sense of security, which means we lose our trust in our world and our parents and the people that are supposed to love us, which causes us then in the brain to doubt truth and fear knowledge. And this is what's going on right now. If I'm arrested in development, I'm scared of the knowledge I'm finding out about the days that we're living in. It scares me half to death. I'm petrified. I'm paralyzed. See, and so what we do then is we reject ourselves as flawed and defective. Now, if I if I fear knowledge and I doubt truth and I lack trust, then I can counsel you, and you 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 may want to believe what I'm telling you, but you won't believe what I'm telling you until your thalamus. Your brain hears your voice in, in validating your value system, and when it hears your voice, it will only believe your voice. And that's why I tell people in, in the tape series on, on the, the Bible and the spoken word is that too much of the time we are programming and reading the Word of God if we, if we even can get the, the guts to read it because sometimes we're afraid of what we might find out, so we don't read the Word of God. But if we get into the Scripture and I read out loud instead of read silently, then I'm programming my thalamus, the, my hard drive, with my voice, and your hard drive, your brain, is only going to believe what you say because it doesn't believe what I say. See, and that's why it's very important that, that, that when I'm working with people, I, I will have them repeat after me. I will give them self-talk to say so that your brain hears your voice and your voice starts the healing process and the maturing process to the point that even as I'm talking to you right now, I give you who are listening permission to grow up, permission to heal. Because if I'm a, if I'm stuck as a child, then I need permission to go to the bathroom sometimes or to go to Johnny's on my bicycle across the street, always looking for permission. So I give you permission to heal. I give you permission and, and in the name of Jesus, to do what you know you need to do, and you need to say the things that that we're talking about to yourself so your your brain hears and starts to believe your words, 
because it recognizes your voice. So when what what you're doing then is the things you've learned tonight in this three hour session, those things as you repeat them and you hear them again and you start to loosen up and realize that no matter how badly you've been hurt, you still have value. And see somebody somebody called me not too long ago and said, Well you said that that we're good. And I said, no, I never said that. I said, we have value in spite of all my sin, my craziness, my stupidity, my pornography, my adultery, uh, my drugs, my alcohol, all of those things. Uh, in spite of that, I still had value to, to the Lord Jesus. And, and so why not take advantage of that value and find out how much value he really sees in me? Because... He called me out and he gave me this program and the program is working worldwide and you could multiply the Deb's work with the couple that just wrote in on an email. You can multiply that by thousands in the 25 years that she's been with us because it's consistent. People are finding out. They are worth something and you, you know that, Steve, in your own family, that they're worth something. They find out they have value. And it's just, it's a new life. And, and that's the hope. And that's, that's the, the graciousness of the mercy of our creator who said that his mercy is new every day. So as we, as we may doubt truth, but as we speak it, the, the brain will receive that truth from you, maybe not from me, because you doubt truth and you're afraid of, of knowledge, but as you speak it, as you read the Word of God, it will hear it in your voice and start to believe it, and you will start seeing change. One of the toughest things that uh, when Judy, when I wrote the program years ago, and, and we, have, we have certain things that for 30 days we repeat two, three times a day, and one of them is to look in your own eyes in a mirror and say, I love you. Because the Scripture says, love your, love your neighbor as yourself. If I can't love me, I cannot love my neighbor. If I can't love me and find my value, I can't love my wife. If I can't find my value and and have self-respect for me, even in my process of growing up and and healing, then I can't love my children. So the Bible is very clear on this, that God sees value in each one of us, and that's why he sent his son to pay the price for us, and so if we can learn to value, and, and, and Judy did the self-talk, and she looked in, her, in, in the mirror in her eyes, and, and she couldn't talk. She was paralyzed. And so she finally ended up on a tape recorder, a cassette recorder, and she spoke these things into the recorder for about two weeks. As she's getting ready in the morning, she's playing the recorder, hearing her own voice, but she couldn't say it to herself till about two, three weeks later, and she looked into her eyes and started to repeat, you know, what she was supposed to say. And, and she stopped and she says, I didn't know you had green eyes. And she started to get comfortable with herself. And now she has she's developed self-respect and found the balance. And her brain is believing that she has value. And the change is unbelievable. And she's now teaching classes for the first time in about 20 years. And the women are just just eating it up because they know she's been there. And Steve and I hit it off because he knows I've been there. And I've waded through this stuff. And I I can predict, I can tell you what's going to happen. And and it'll happen. And that's all part of growth. And that's one thing a lot of people like with life skills is there are no surprises. See, and so it's very, it's, it's necessary that when you've been wounded, your your brain and your your thalamus hears your voice doing the validation. Hears your voice as it's doing the self talk, and and that is really what makes the change. It's that important, and it's wonderful. So so, doctor, what you're saying, if if I correctly understand this, is you can actually uh, speak the words. I mean, speak your uh, you, you you could. Uh, speak yourself into a cure, or uh, work yourself by, by professing what you 
what you want, the end result. By professing the end result, you can actually get to get to it that way. I yeah. I, I mess that yeah, up, but I, it's, it, it's that's that's kind of it. But what it is, it's more of validation. So many people want their dad to validate them, or they want a mother to validate, or they want a husband to validate. And and a person who's never been validated cannot validate another person. But when you understand that, and, and it's it's fun to work with young people in their 20s and 30s that have been deeply wounded because in, in just a few days doing the self-talk and validating, we validate tremendously. Every person I meet, I find good stuff in that person, and I'll bring that out. And they, they, they'll say, well, I didn't, I didn't know. Do you, can you really see that in me? Well, yeah, I see that in you. See, and, and God sees that in you. So take the validation, and, and it, it works miracles. Uh, in, and, and that doesn't mean that, that uh, it starts the healing, but there's so much more to the healing than that. But in, in the healing process, the whole life skills program works together, and it's like Isaiah 28 when I, God told the old prophet, my people are, are on, like babies on the breast, and it's time they come away from the breast and get wisdom. The getting of wisdom is the knowledge of God, precept upon precept upon precept upon precept, line upon line upon line upon line, here a little, there a little. In other words, we're not blowing smoke at ourselves, but we're finding areas of value and kindness and things that are there, but they have not developed. And so that, that, that sets the stage for self-worth. And, I, and I'm not taking this out of, out of, out of uh, context with Scripture. You could, you could abuse this, too. But to really, to really do a soul-searching and find out character traits that, that have been your gift, but you've been focusing on the negative so long that it's hard to find any positive. And so there's a balance in this, but it is a part of the healing process. Interesting. Steve, Steve we've got about 20 minutes left of the program, and I don't want to uh, 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 tarry here with respect to the questions that are unnecessary, so I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, because uh, take this take this where we need to go here, uh, Steve. If you don't mind. Well, I think first of all, uh, you know the the the, the statement that uh, Doctor Hagstrom teaches everybody is if you're teachable, it's fixable. And by the way, that's the true definition of meek. When it says Moses was the meekest man, he was very very teachable. Okay. The problem is, as I referred to it earlier, is that the men in the pulpit cannot, and, and look, I'm sure there are exceptions to this, and I'm, so I'm not trying to make a blanket statement, but let's just take the 80% that are having difficulty in the pornography realm. 80% of those guys are arrested in their development. That means they have not overcome that which ties them down or binds them so it's pretty hard to set people free it doesn't mean god won't use you to cast out demons and do that kind of stuff but it just means that it's not it's, it, it basically if we could get all those guys together and let uh, dr hangstrom have at them for a week the following week you'd have basically a breakthrough in the churches of america and men of god would be hungry for god again so that's i really believe that this is such the end time, uh, if you will, church and the mother of harlots, that it is the total, total, uh, if you will, weakening and the attack upon the body. Because, listen, you attack the shepherds and the sheep scatter. You, you, you know, you'd get rid of the shepherds and basically the sheep become uh, wolf bait, you know, or wolf uh, morsels. So I think the, the point is, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you know, Dr. Hagstrom, but the point, you have to be fixed and fixable in order to help others, and that's what King David said, let the man whom the Lord has redeemed say so. Let the man who's grown up out of arrested development, that's basically what you're doing, tell so. And and God chose, in, in you crying out to him all those years, to basically give you the plan because you basically were ready, you came to the end of what you knew you could do, Correct. Absolutely. 
And Absolutely. when you came to your end, that's when Jesus started with your new beginning and healed your marriage, gave you everything you always wanted but couldn't find in your arrested development stage. And and so I think that's the thing that, uh, you know, that uh, we should do. If you wouldn't mind, uh, you know, Dr. Hagstrom, I'd like to pray for everybody, and then I'll just turn it over to you to close it out, okay? Yeah, let's do that. And if you have any any questions that have been emailed in or something like that that you see are special, let's give it a maybe a shot with a couple questions. After sure. Well, pray. let's do that first. Then, Doug. Just I just need the last five minutes. I'm not going to be long winded. Okay. Are there any pressing questions that are and and try and give them the one. By the way, everyone, just this is an alert coming in. There's been a huge earthquake off of British Columbia, 7.7, yep. and that's a critical one. That's on the Queen. Charlotte Fault above the Juan de Fuca Fault. That's one of the areas that all the volcanologists and the earthquake uh, seismologists have been worried about without going into a lot of detail. That's not what we're talking about tonight, but a 7.7. 7. So, uh, Joe, if there are some really, and, and, and give Dr. Hags from the ones that aren't, uh, that the ones that are specific and that will be helpful, not just the general, you know, well, I studied psychology, blah, blah, blah. If there's anybody there that has specific questions, would you read those to the doctor? I've got one here, Joe, right now. Uh, actually, uh, this woman, has, her sister is a uh, is a homosexual. She's a lesbian. She wants to know if that's a learned behavior or if that is something that uh, is genetic, as simple as that. Yeah. And and my my research tells me that it is not genetic. It is there are wounds in childhood that cause these things to happen, and this has been this this is going to be a tough situation to deal with in the future because of the uh, uh, not being able to offer an alternative lifestyle to someone who's in the gay and lesbian field, and that's coming. It's already in Canada, and there are several pastors that are spending time in jail because of offering that. But we have done tremendous amounts of research because my heart has been in 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 a, a position of knowing how, how hurting some people are. And so we have researched a tremendous amount to find out that there is there there are causes, uh thing wounds that have happened that will exacerbate that that uh situation. So uh, again, if you're teachable, it is fixable. Uh, uh, to me, it, it is not a generic thing. All right, that was right. from Cheryl. Yeah, okay, uh, Dr. Hegstrom, this is a question from a friend of the show, a 9-11 first responder, who says that uh, his anger, uh, he feels he's is keeping him alive um, in, in uh, trying to battle uh, for benefits and help other 9-11 first responders. He says, in other words, it's my anger keeping me alive. I have nothing to live for if I give it up. How can... Uh, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. How would you respond to that, Doctor? Oh, uh, I've got a great response for that. Uh, I was I was doing some, uh, some TV recording. We have a high-definition studio in Aurora, Colorado. And I brought a guest in to do some things on anxiety and anger. And this man's in his uh, in his 80s and well known around the world. And I ask a question because in our research on anger, we find that anger is a secondary reaction to a primary feeling that has been tre- tweaked or triggered. And I so I said, "What's the primary feeling?" And he says, "Well, it's anger." And I says, "No, there's a primary feeling. No." Anger is the primary feeling, and and so I realized that because we had an audience, I needed to back off of it, and so I talked to the gentleman after the shoot was over. It was about a, an hour and a half uh, video that we put together, and what we find out is is anger is always a secondary reaction to a primary feeling being triggered, and and our research on this is, is just phenomenal, uh, and so we teach uh, in in what we have uh, chapter nine the the anger kit, and so we teach what are the primary feelings and and if I can identify my primary feeling, I can resolve the anger very quickly and so one of the things that that uh, our our person that has emailed in is for instance, the secondary feeling is always angry there's anger. But one of the things that he's really dealing with 
is is number one disappointment because he's not making any progress. He has a lot of feelings beside the anger. There's a resentment that nobody's listening to him. There's a disappointment and and confusion and frustration. So I mean, there's several primary feelings here because this is normal for first responders, and so he feels like like uh, almost a hopelessness and a helplessness and a powerlessness. So, I mean, we've got, we've got eight or nine feelings here because he knows what's needed, but he's not getting the cooperation. And, and, and so there's a lot of anger kicking in and a lot of adrenaline that's keeping him alive. But, again, he's, he's dealing with other feelings because he has some ideas of what could be done, but the ideas are not being are not being used. Nobody wants to listen. They don't want to deal with the situation. And I know a little because I have some some friends that were first responders back when the towers went down, and and they're just not getting anywhere. All the ideas in the world, uh, nobody cares. It seems. And so they're just they're just rocking along, and things are not being not being taken care of like they should. And so there's, there's a lot of feelings that he's dealing with, but the feelings are what he's dealing with, which is is producing the anger, which is producing the adrenaline, which is keeping him alive. But we can we can deal with the the uh, like inadequacy. What could I do? And so if I was if I was working with him in, in private work. I would actually list the feelings he's dealing with and then look at each feeling and see what could we do if we could put a team together that would that would help uh those that have that are really feeling the same things see and so get the get a process started and uh and something happening uh and 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 Try to find out where can we go, who could we work with that that would would give us some cooperation. Very good. Uh and wow, okay. So anger is always a second is 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 that a true statement? Anger is always a secondary reaction to a primary yeah. feeling. Okay. I've heard so that. Primary feeling that's been triggered. And okay. and if we can trace the primary feeling, the anger we can resolve the anger. For instance, if you and I were talking and you said something that triggered me, I would stop and say, I triggered and I feel my, my neck getting red because that's one of my first manifestations of anger. And and so I, I say, what I heard you say made me feel powerless in this in this conversation. And you would say, well, that, that, that was not what I meant. And and we would talk it out and resolve the anger right on the spot. And then what happens is as we resolve these discontents, we learn to trust each other because we can resolve the issues. Resolution of is- issues in, in friendships or relationships are the things that build the trust and we know we're safe. So, Got it. And that, that, that builds the trust and, and we know we can work things out. All right. Uh, I've got uh, about four or five different emails about the same topic. I'll just kind of summarize it. Uh, all, all, all five, actually, people have children or friends that uh, are concerned that uh, their music, heavy metal music, uh, among other things, rap music and such, are actually changing the way their loved ones are thinking. Is that uh, is that possible? I mean, you know, what do you recommend? Is, uh, cold turkey away from it? Is it possible that the music's changing the uh uh, the people? Absolutely. Because I agree what with that. Them, what, we, what we put into our mind will affect us for a lifetime. And that's why we need to guard the ear gate, the eye gate, the feeling gate, all those gates. And the scripture talks about that, that, uh, you know, if we if we let down and let things in, it will change us. And so it will change the brain. And, and uh, it is those things are not a good influence. So we need to monitor what we take in, monitor okay. what we think about, monitor what we listen to. Yeah, it, it, and is, that is, is couples there... with the lack of parenting and supervision over this kind of music. We can see in the inner cities and the right. just that attitude uh, of rebellion that this music puts yeah. into their head without them even knowing it. 
And, and, I, hey, Doug, I want to yeah, answer that, too. I, I, when I wrote my book, Genetic Armageddon, and prior to that, I did a whole week-long series of the a, a way that sound can actually change your DNA, okay? And for people that don't understand that, harmonics, you can change the vibrational frequency. Everything has a frequency. Obviously, you can go into the what holds matter together and that's why magnetism when mit ran the uh uh if you will the study on the effect that magnetism has on the part of the brain right behind the ear that they could not only change the uh uh, if you will, neurological balance, but they could actually change uh, cell division. And there were two Chinese guys, this is interesting, that took the harmonics of a, I, I believe it was a turkey, a literal turkey, and took the frequency of the turkeys talking, you know, the gobble, 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 the, you know, the, the joke we make, and started beaming in at chickens, okay, and changing the chickens. And, and believe it or not, and, and this is, an, I forget the name of the Chinese uh, guys this is in a file someplace I had 15 years ago, but at that point they could change it. If you remember the BASF tape commercial when they break the glass because of the frequency, that's what you can cause mutagenic, that means genetic mutations by exposing organic material to different frequencies. And this is what's really fascinating, and I, and I know just the one little giant tidbit, it is the frequencies of specific sounds that bring the giants that are in stasis or suspended animation out. And people are now talking about the strange sounds. I'm not just talking about the, the, the horns around the world and stuff, but I'm talking about strange harmonics that are taking place. In order for you to see the invisible realm, the literal structure of the visible light light spectrum will change. And again, I would refer everyone to a, a marvelous uh, piece that a friend of mine sent me from uh, Mr. Langley. I think it's on my website, or it was, and if it isn't, I'll put it up again. But the point is, is he said the whole purpose in chemtrails and in the electromagnetic uh, uh, manipulation with HARP was to literally change the atmosphere of the Earth and to literally change the life forms of the Earth. So I can tell you this. Somebody sent me, and I'm not a heavy metal fan, but when I heard it, it absolutely made me crazy. I do not believe you can put heavy metal and Christian music in the same. I don't care if you put Jesus terms into it. It is the vibrational and the harmonics that are absolutely... Uh, Dr. Eby, I knew him before he passed away. He, he died, went to heaven, went to hell. And what he told me point blank is when he was in hell, and I, I, you knew him too, didn't you, Dr. Hagstrom? Yeah, I did. Yeah, and you remember him saying that when he went to hell, that in the sarcophaguses where the people are kept before they're pulled out to be tortured, he said the most horrific heavy metal music, he said, and he said to the Lord, he said, but God, there shouldn't be that kind of music, and I'm paraphrasing, in hell, and he said, because of the origin, it returns to its place of origination. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so that's pretty weird. I'm just telling you point blank. Dr. Eby, uh, a fascinating book, and you can look it up and, and talk about it, but it, it's amazing. So I just would say the science backs up Dr. Hagstrom, the literal word of God backs up, and don't forget, everyone, that the whole, if you will, 60s and early 70s rock music scene from Great Britain was pretty much engineered and overseen by Aleister Crowley, who considered himself Mr. 666, and he considered himself the most luciferic representative on earth at that time. If you go to Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club's band cover, many of you will remember that. You'll see Aleister Crowley prominently uh, 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 placed in kind of the middle, and you'll also know that Jimmy Page lives in Aleister Crowley's old mansion. So in the world of the occult, rock music has been a vehicle. And look, I'm not down on rock. I'm just telling you that the specific frequencies are, are designed and harmonics are designed, and let me just be blunt, to destroy, to disfigure, and to basically reconfigure away from the things of God. And I believe that's the noises and the vibrational harmonics of infrared and that's what's controlling most people in America now, why they cannot even think. 
Interesting. Yeah, you just, Steve, you just covered about uh, half a dozen questions I had. Yeah. We, you know, I was given. <laughs> and we got about two minutes left on yeah. the show. Uh, and, and folks, uh, to end the program, before we end the program, uh, I just want to direct everyone to Life Skills I N T L. In other words, Life Skills International, but Life Skills I N T L dot org, and also to Steve Quayle dot com. That's Q U A Y L E and S T E V E. Steve Quayle dot com. Both websites. You've got to bookmark them, and certainly check out the books, the DVDs on Life Skills International. Steve, go ahead and take us out on uh, with a prayer if you'd like. Okay, and again, the last thing I'm going to say before I go to prayer is this, is that you must absolutely avail yourself of the things that Dr. Hayström has written. I will say this. I've been around for 40 years, saved as a Christian, battled my battles, battled myself, opposed myself, but when I basically read Broken Children, Grown Up Pain, it was the most transforming book. And look, I'm not tired. this is not a self-help book. This is a revelatory blueprint for wholeness. I would also recommend that when you go on there, you get the Bible and the Brain CD set so you'll understand what it means to have your mind, your brain renewed and, and, and the power of God renewed through the power of God. Let me close out in prayer. How long do we have, Doug? Yeah, about a minute. Okay. Well, Father, in Jesus' name, I rejoice with Dr. Hagstrom. Thank you, God. I know he's running on, on 14 hours, but I just bless him in Jesus' name, and I ask, Lord, that you will put such a spirit of hope, a revelation, and, and, and Lord, that the people who are bound will see that there is a key to unlocking them, that they'll understand how great your love is when you say that you will transform us into the image and likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Dr. Hagstrom prayed and asked you, Lord, what's normal, you said the life of Jesus, something that seems so foreign, so impossible, yet so uh, you are able to transform us. We can't transform ourselves. Lord, the bottom line is we thank you and praise you. I ask you to bless Doug and Joe. And, Lord, again, I ask for a release of finances over their ministry. I just bless uh, 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 my friends, J.D. and J.P., Lord, for just, just blessing and making this possible. Possible. This show will go out to millions. I pray for everyone around the world, Lord, that you will raise up men who are men and mighty intercessors in the women, and that, God, you will take this and you will set the captives free and that your army can now come out of the dust of the earth. Lord, we don't need revival. We need resurrection, Father. And as Jesus called forth Lazarus, I pray that the resurrection power of Almighty God would literally call forth all those who are in grave clothes and that your word to to Mary, Martha, and the men at the resurrection of Lazarus, go and unbind him. May the words and may the teaching of Dr. Paul Hags from Lord be that which breaks the chains and feathers and brings those who are in their grave clothes into the glory and resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We've reached the end of the program. Dr. Hagstrom and uh, Steve, thank you both yeah. so very much for sacrificing Such your time. Such a great show. Thank you. God bless you. Good night. Take care. Good night.